Hi, this is Eric Keller for Otoy. In this video, we're going to take a look at some techniques you can use when taking textures created in Substance Painter and applying them to models rendered in Octane for Cinema 4D. So for this project, we're taking a look at uh, this robot I created. It's kind of a Gundam-style robot. You can see the Octane logo is featured prominently on the headgear here. And we'll be taking a look at how I created the textures or how I exported the textures for Substance and then how I adapted them to use with Octane shaders. So all the materials that I used for this robot, uh, with the exception of the glowing red eyes, are Octane glossy materials. They're actually fairly simple materials. They have a bunch of texture maps that I created in Substance Painter plugged into the diffuse specular and roughness channel. And I'm also using a displacement map for the details, but you could use a normal or bump map if you wanted to. Mostly what I'm concerned with talking about are how I'm using the texture maps that I created for the diffuse, specular, and roughness channels. So let's take a closer look at the material I've applied to the metal on the head, and that is a glossy material. So I have a texture map for in the diffuse, in the specular, and the roughness. The diffuse channel is the color of the metal. So this is what the diffuse uh, map looks like. So we see we have gold metal, kind of light bluish metal, and then black paint. And then we also have uh, a fair number of scratches. Since this is diffuse, the scratches are going to reveal the raw metal underneath the surface. So on the surface here, they appear kind of silverish gray. In the diffuse map, they are black because those raw bits of metal are not diffusing light back into the environment, they're reflecting light back into the environment, which brings us over to the specular channel. So if we take a look at the specular map, we can see that we have uh, gold paint, blue paint, black paint, and then uh, silverish color for the scratches in the metal. So this is what uh, the specular map looks like. So by putting color into the specular map, we get more of a realistic metal because metal tends to pick up the color of the surface in the specular highlights. So especially on these gold parts, we have this gold metallic paint, you can see that the specular highlights, the reflections of the lights in the scene, are picking up some of that gold color from the metal. And that's why we have a color map in the specular channel. So the roughness channel controls the smoothness of the surface. In other words, a very high level of roughness is going to spread out the highlights more across the surface. So in these areas where we have black paint, we're going to have a light color for the roughness because it's not quite as smooth. On the areas where we have kind of shinier metal or especially in the scratches, we're going to have a darker color for the roughness because they're essentially reflecting more light into the environment because they're a bit smoother than say the black paint. So if you compare the parts of the surface right here where we have raw metal next to black paint. We're going to have low roughness in the raw metal and high roughness in the black paint. And I have a texture map that is also controlling that that I created in Substance Painter. So let's take a look at the Substance Painter file for this robot project. For the shader that I'm using in this project to preview the textures, I've chosen the PBR Spec Gloss. So you have a number of different shaders that you can choose. And actually when you first create your painter file, when you choose New, you are given under template a number of different choices. I chose the PBR uh, specular glossiness because that one is the closest to the octane glossy material. There's a couple of minor adjustments that need to be made when I create the shader network, but that one's pretty close. You could use these other ones as well, but each one requires just a little bit of adjustment when you're working in octane, and we'll cover a few of those techniques throughout this video. But for this one, I'm using uh, PBR spec gloss. If we look at the shader channels here, you can see that we have our diffuse channel, our specular, height and normal. I'm kind of ignoring these for the moment since I'm using a displacement map in the Octane uh, project file. Uh, but we also have the glossiness channel. So the main ones I want to focus on are diffuse, specular, and glossiness. So if we go into the mode here, I'm going to choose solo and let's take a look at the diffuse. Very straightforward. This is the color of the metal on the robot. So you can see that we have gold metal, we have black paint, I should say we have gold paint, black paint, and bluish metallic paints, and then the scratch marks here are kind of a dark uh, color, revealing the metal underneath. And then if we take a look at the 
uh, specular channel, you can see that the specular channel is, is tinted with various colors. So for the gold metal on the robot, I have kind of an orange tint painted on for those specular highlights. And then the bluish, light bluish metal, we have light bluish highlights. And then for the scratches, we have uh, a gray color, a light gray. And then for scorch marks, we have kind of a dark black color because those parts are going to be uh, dull anyways. And then also for the black paint itself, you can see it's a fairly dark color being reflected back. So uh, that is the specular channel. Again, pretty straightforward. If I go down to the glossiness channel, what we'll see, the glossiness controls the intensity and the sharpness of the specular highlights on the surface. So light colors in the glossiness map correspond to a light, sharp highlight or a tight, shiny highlight. The darker colors are duller parts of the surface and gray is sort of in between. So a glossiness channel is the opposite of the octane roughness channel. So when you paint your glossiness channel in um, Painter, it's fine to paint these light and dark colors. All you have to do is remember that when we go back into Octane and we plug this into our glossy material, we're going to need to invert it so that it's the opposite of what we see here. And then it should behave correctly. So I spent some time painting the various texture maps for my robot project. And when I was happy with them, I chose File, Export Textures. And I set where I was going to export the textures and then which textures were going to be exported. So all the glossy materials for the robot are pretty much set up the same way. So let's just take a look at the glossy material that I applied to the head. So I exported the texture maps from a Substance Painter. The diffuse map, I just plugged straight into the diffuse channel of my glossy material. The specular map, I plugged into a color correction node just so I could add maybe a little bit more brightness. I thought it was a bit dull, so I set the brightness to 2. So just a little bit of adjustment there and this plugged into the specular channel. So the big adjustment I need to make is with the map that is plugged into the roughness channel of that glossy material. So here's roughness and I have the glossy map that I exported from Substance Painter uh, plugged into that roughness channel. But as I mentioned a couple times before, the glossy map created by that template in Substance Painter is the opposite of the roughness channel and the glossy material. So that's pretty easy to fix. All you need to do is put an octane invert texture node between the glossy texture map and the roughness channel. Another thing I'll, I'll often do, because I, I probably want to tune this a little bit more, is uh, I'll go in here to um, maps, octane, and create a color correction node. And let's plug this into the texture of the color correction node and then plug this into roughness and then get the invert node, just get that out of the way here. So the options for the color correction node, you can turn on invert here and that takes the place of what the invert node was doing before. So I'm inverting the texture and then what I can do is I can start to uh, adjust some of the settings. So let's say I lower the brightness to like 0.2, that's going to make the metal on the helmet shinier because it's less rough lowering that roughness overall. It makes the metal a little bit shinier. It's a good way to kind of tune the look. So however you prefer to work, whatever makes the most sense to you, you can either just, you can stick an invert node between the texture and the roughness input on the glossy material, or my preferred method, put a color correction node in there, turn on the invert option, and then make adjustments as needed. So let's take a quick look at another example that uses a different template from Substance Painter. So for this example, instead of using the PBR Specular Glossiness template, I'm using the PBR Metallic Roughness template. So in this case, it's a little bit different shader. And for this example, I'm just working on the head. I've added some splattered mud to the surface just to make the uh, kind of the changes in the surface quality a little bit more obvious. So let's take a look at the PBR Metal Roughness channels. We have base color. It's slightly different from diffuse. This is the diffuse texture that was exported in the previous example. And you notice it does have the colors of the surface, but we notice that where the scratches are, the, we have sort of a dark color, a black color, because those parts of the surface are reflecting more of that raw metal. So there's less of a diffuse value there. The base color texture is different because now we're seeing the colors of the surface and notice that the scratches here, instead of being black, 
they're the bluish kind of silver color. So that's the first major difference. The next major difference, of course, is we have a metallic uh, channel here. So if I switch to solo mode, and let's take a look at metallic, instead of the specular color, which had the color of the reflections on the surface, we have a grayscale texture. And this grayscale to texture determines how metallic the surface is. So lighter colors mean it's more metallic, darker colors mean it's less metallic. So what does this mean? Well, this means that when this is applied to the shader, more of that color, of the base color, is going to be visible in the specular highlights on the parts of the surface that are white. And less of that base color is going to come through on the parts where the surface are dark colors. So in this case, since I have these kind of mud splatters all over the surface, if you take a close look at that, I don't want the blue color uh, to come through in the highlights or any of the diffuse quality of these mud splatters because they're not metal, they're dirt, right? And then, of course, we want to take a look at the roughness channel. And this is actually easy because this is the opposite of glossiness. So this is something that we can plug directly into the roughness channel of our Octane shader without having to do too much manipulation if we don't want to. So I'm going to export the textures just for the head. So I'll choose File, Export Textures. I'm just doing the head just for this example to keep things nice and short. Uh, but you can see it's going to be creating a number of texture maps. The ones that I'm mostly concerned with are base color, roughness, and metallic. So again, this is just another approach to using textures from Substance Painter in your Octane Shader Networks. And in this case, I need to make some adjustments to those textures that I exported, specifically the base color and the metallic texture maps, so that I can use them within my glossy material in Octane. So the first thing I need to do is my uh, base color. You'll notice the base color texture that I exported looks a lot like the specular image that I created in the previous example. But I'm plugging this into the diffuse channel of the glossy material. So I'm running it through a color correction node before plugging it into diffuse. And the color correction node I'm using to kind of lower the brightness and also increase the saturation a little bit. Um, and then for the uh, specular highlights, since the glossy material in Octane does not have a metallic channel, what I need to do is I need to plug that uh, base color into the specular channel. But if I do it directly, of course, then I'm going to have uh, on the scratch marks on the surface and also on the mud splatters, I'm going to end up having a colored specular highlight, which is what I don't want to do. So I'm using that metallic map that I exported from uh, Substance Painter as kind of a mask and I'm using it to mask a mixed texture. So if we take a look here, we have, here's my base color, and it is going into two different color correct nodes. One color correct node is simply desaturating it. So it's lowering the saturation, and this is gonna be used for the scratches and the mud splatters and those parts of the surface that are not metallic. And then I have another color correct node called tint, which again, I'm kind of uh, upping the saturation. Well, actually, the saturation is set to about 1. So I probably set this up to like 1.1 or something like that. And I'm lowering the brightness as well. So I have a desaturated version and a slightly more saturated, darker version coming out of the base color texture map. They're both going into a mixed texture. And then I'm using that metallic map that was exported out of Substance Painter as a mask, so it's being plugged into the amount of the mixed texture, and that's being plugged into the specular channel of my glossy material. So a little bit more work uh, to use this method, but uh, it's uh, certainly valid. Uh, the nice thing about this method is that for the roughness channel in the glossy material, I don't really need to do anything to the roughness map that was exported from uh, Substance Painter but I do like to run it through a color correction node just so I can adjust the brightness a little bit. So I've cut the brightness down to about 0.8 here as it goes into the uh, head glossy material. And then of course I have the same displacement map that I was using before. So the result is a slightly different look. You can see the blue paint looks more obviously like a blue paint in this uh, particular version, but you can see how I've got those kind of yellow or gold highlights on the metallic parts and then uh, desaturated highlights on some of the scrapes and scratches and the mud splatters. 
So this is just another approach to using texture maps exported from Substance Painter in Octane for Cinema 4D. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope it's given you some ideas on how you can use textures created in Substance Painter in Octane for Cinema 4D. You can download the project files and take a look at the shader networks and build upon them if you like.